Welcome to devlog number four. In this devlog, I'll share how I changed my tank's movement to be more like how old clutch braking tanks used to move. Then I'll also share how I fixed the direction snapping bug that happens with eight-way top-down 2D movement. In the last two devlogs, I shared how I added two different pathfinding systems for the tanks to follow. But in the hours I spent watching my enemy tanks, move trying to make my pathfinding work, I started to dislike how they're able to turn and switch direction instantly. While I'm not trying to make a simulation game here, I just want the turn to look a bit more realistic. So to address this problem, I changed it so that the tanks now have to stop, turn, and then move when changing direction. Turning 180 degrees is no longer instant and I think it looks much better. This also mimics how old tanks used to move. To make this work, the first thing I tried was to just simply use the new scene tree tween in Godot 3.5, which I believe was backported from Godot 4. I just tried to tween from the current rotation to the desired rotation and ignore inputs while the tween is running. And this works for most turns, but a few of the turns make the tank spin wildly. The reason for this is because of how rotation is represented in Godot using radians. If the tank is facing east, then its rotation is zero. And if the tank is facing west, then its rotation is 3.14 or pi. If it's north, then it's negative 1.57 pi over two. And if it's south, then it's 1.57. So when you turn east to west, that's zero to 3.14. And that works, uh, it tweens clockwise. But the problem comes when you're tweening from west to north and your start rotation is pi and then you're going to negative 1.57. So this makes it tween counterclockwise when it would be better to just tween it clockwise. To solve this problem, I had to take advantage of the fact that negative pi and pi both point west and I had to use multi-step tweening. So with my solution, going from east to west is the same, but now going from west to north, I convert pi to negative pi, and then I go to negative 1.57. This makes the tween go from a smaller negative number to a larger negative number, and it turns clockwise. An example of where I need multi-step tweening is going from north to southwest, and I go from negative 1.57, which is north, and I do a stopover at negative pi west, and then from there I go to pi to 2.35. Before, if you tried to just tween from negative 1.57 all the way to 2.35, then the tank would turn clockwise the long way around. In code, the work is done by my calc turn start and end function, takes the current rotation, the final rotation, and the difference between the two, and it returns a result array, which is a series of start and end radian values to tween to. The first thing it checks is the simplest case, where the diff is less than or equal to pi, for example, east to west, and this just uh, returns both rotations unchanged, that way we turn clockwise. Second scenario is, the diff is greater than pi and we are at pi, so for example west to northeast is the turn, then we make pi negative and then we return the final rotation as is unchanged. This makes it go clockwise properly. The third scenario is the diff is more than pi and we're not at pi so we need to go to pi first. Uh, an example of this is southwest to northwest, so we need to do a stopover at pi. If the current rotation is less than zero, then we're at the top half of the circle. So we make the intermediate pi target negative so that the tween turns counterclockwise towards it. And then if pi is not the final rotation, then we're not done. And we need to go from pi to the final rotation. And we check if the final rotation is negative if it's at again at the top half of the circle and if, if it is negative then we make pi negative so the turn is clockwise there's probably a much more clever way 
of doing this smart turning using proper geometry and I'm an idiot for doing it this way, but it's been a long time since I studied geometry and my googling skills did not yield any results. So if you know of a better way to do this, please let me know in the comments. But with the logic as is, it works and the turns look good. The next thing I had to figure out was the duration of the turns. It wouldn't make sense if the turn from north to south took the same amount of time it took to turn from north to northeast. So I added this export variable 1 8th turn speed and this represents the time in seconds it should take to turn 1 8th of a circle. And then that gets used in this calc turn duration function which basically does this calculation. Uh, you take the difference uh, between the two radians and you figure out how many one eighths of a circle is in that difference. And then if it's greater than four, because we turn smartly towards the smaller angle, we only need the modulo difference from four. And then that value is what gets multiplied to the one eighth turn speed. So for example, if we're turning southwest to northwest, then there's two one eighths of a circle in that turn and that should take 0.25 seconds. But if we're turning north to south, then that has four one-eighths of a circle, and that should take half a second. The next problem I fixed is something I've had from the beginning of this project. I think it's specific to top-down 2D games that implement eight-way movement using keyboard WASD keys. See, to go northeast, you have to press W and D together, and that works. The issue is stopping. To stop, you have to release both keys simultaneously, and if one finger is slower than the other by 16 milliseconds, or more specifically one run of the physics process, then the tank snaps in the direction of that last move direction. I can demonstrate that here by printing out the move direction that the physics process is getting. See how it snapped north because I released W one frame slower than D? Here it snapped west, going southwest. Other 2D games hide this problem by not having the character face diagonally. So even if you hold D too long and your last input is a vector 2 right, it's okay because your character is already facing right. Although snapping north still happens occasionally. And then other games like Bastion here don't seem to have the problem at all. Now maybe it's just my old man fingers and an elite esports 180 no scope headshot gamer will always 100% of the time be able to lift both fingers at exactly the same rate, but this is my game and I'll be the one playing it the most during development. After searching the internet yielded no solutions to my problem, I decided to just buffer the movement input. What I'm printing out here is the last move direction, the current move direction, the move direction buffer, and the physics process delta. With buffering, a move direction has to be held for at least 30 milliseconds before it's used by a tank. And as you can see, when moving diagonally, even when I fail to perfectly lift both fingers to stop, the tank does not snap to the final errant move direction. It's still facing diagonally. To make this happen, I wrote this buffer move direction function. It's called by the physics process, and it takes the current move direction and the delta, and it returns true if the current move direction should be buffered based on the last move direction and the current size of the move direction buffer. If the current move direction is zero, then that's a stop. We don't want to buffer that, so save it as the last move direction and then return false to not buffer it. Then if the current move direction is not equal to the last move direction, save it as the last move direction and then reset the move direction buffer back down to zero and then return true to buffer this current move direction. If the move directions are equal, then we check that if the move direction buffer is less than the move direction buffer size, then we accumulate the buffer by adding delta to it and then return true to buffer this 
current move direction. Otherwise, we return false, and this is what will cause the tank to start moving because it will, it will start using this current move direction. This does add 30 milliseconds of lag to user input from a dead stop. To mask this, I plan to play the animation of the tank tracks moving while still buffering the actual input. So the user will see the tank tracks start to move in the first 30 milliseconds even though the tank isn't yet moving. If you know of a better way to solve this diagonal snapping, please let me know in the comments. I'm new to game development, so I've never encountered these kinds of problems before. Alright, that's it for this devlog. As a YouTube channel programming note, this video is the last in the series of catch-up videos that I had to make to share my progress since August of last year. The next videos will be more of a traditional devlog where I share my much slower progress throughout the week, but it will actually be a more realistic representation of what it's like to be a part-time indie game developer. So if you're interested in that kind of content, you can subscribe. Thanks for watching and goodbye.